to the flesh, and then the, they run to the spirit. And they're parallel one to another. The carnal mind cannot understand the mysteries and the secrets of God because they can't comprehend them. But the fleshly mind of us before we're born of that spiritual mind, it wants to take in all the things of the natural man. It wants to take in a carnal religion. It wants to take in the carnal works of the law. It wants to take in the carnal deeds of the law. Listen, Jesus did not administer to us Gentiles any law. He never purposed for us Gentiles to have the law. If we have the law, we would be the children of the bondwoman. Amen. Can you see that? We would be the children of the bondwoman. If you would just read what Paul wrote in the book of Galatians. He said, Many, many, many more are the children of the bondwoman than the children of the free and her, the children of the free, Sarah, having the husband. Many more today. Look around. To every spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-filled believer that believes that God is a spirit and do their very best to worship Him in spirit and truth and do good deeds for their fellow man. They want to worship God in spirit and truth and then they want to administer some type of of generosity or mercy or kindness toward every person that they meet. That's what this God thing is all about. But listen, many, many more are the children of the bondwoman today than the children of the free. And we have what Paul called to Sarah a husband. Amen. Well, our husband is Jesus. Did you know that? He's the husband. He's the one that reared us. He's the one that brought us. See, the promise to Abraham that he would have a son that would be the seed. Listen, Abraham brought forth Isaac. He brought forth Jacob. He brought forth 12 sons. Those 12 sons, one of them's name was Judah. And Judah, uh, in the day that Jesus was born, Mary was of the tribe of Judah. See how this trickles down? And Jesus is the offspring. He is the only seed, speaking of one. Not many, not thousands of seeds, like the twelve sons have brought forth. No, not even any of the other seeds of the tribe of Judah. Jesus, the only seed or offspring of the tribe of Judah, he will become the only person that will be able to graft the whole world, every nation, every tongue, every kindred, every color of skin. Listen, it's him through the grace that he bestowed. That grace became a DNA, a genealogy that will be the trademark of the saved of the earth. It's by grace, through faith, we are saved. It was by faith, you see, that God gave Abraham a promise. Well, those other people in his genealogy were brought forth through the flesh. But when we got to Jesus, and Jesus took authority in his life as being the seed of Judah, how that he was killed, buried, and resurrected, and now all of the flesh is put out, it's dead, it's done away with, it's fulfilled, it's finished. All of that, that seed of the flesh is finished. And now, it's the seed of the promise, the seed of faith, how that us have been brought into a place with God through Jesus, not through any other way. 
not through any organization, not a name, not a denomination. It's through the name of Jesus that we have partaken and become one of these offspring by faith that we are brought into the realm of the heavenly. Listen, all of that things of the flesh, all of the works and deeds in your church, all the works and deeds of the law that these men have dug out and wiped the blood off and put it into our lifetime, friend, it's all going to be the wages of sin, and the wages of sin is death. You have worked your entire life for nothing. You've accomplished nothing by your natural deeds and by your carnal works of the law being imputed into your life. The law is not what you need in your life. It's you need to exercise your faith. And your faith will have to be into the work that Christ did in his lifetime that John the Baptist talked about how he would become the lamb that took away the sin of the world. When Jesus was killed, he was the lamb without spot, without blemish, without anything that was wrong with him. It was him that became the lamb on that Passover where he was killed in that certain Passover, in that certain generation that certain place of time that he was appointed before the world was, that day was set. I tell you, friend, Jesus could have stood on the cross, nailed to it, and named every person in the crowd, every soldier. He could have given their mamas and daddies. He could have given their mamas and papas. He could have took it back to the generation of Adam. Jesus knew them all. They all had a part. They all had a place to be put in, in a dispensation. That man that pierced him in the side, that Roman soldier, listen, it was predestinated hundreds of years that they will pierce that man in the side. Amen. Listen, we're serving a God. We ain't serving something out here that man's wrote. This is not a fairy tale. And this ain't a fantasy. This is the truth that I'm telling you. Jesus Christ was the end of all carnality and natural type and shadows of things of worship. Jesus Christ was the end of it. He fulfilled all of it. He lived it in his 33 and a half years. He finished it. And when he was nailed to the cross, that soldier whom he could have called by name pierced him in the side. He let the blood and the water. The blood being the atonement of life and the water being the word that washes you. Makes you clean. The sacrifice for your sin and your cleansing was Jesus. Don't never let anybody else tell you that you can earn the forgiveness of your sin by works. It's a lie. It does not happen that way. You have to have faith and you have to trust in the work that Jesus did. Not yourself. You can't earn this. You ain't good enough. For every law you keep, listen, there's 613 laws. For every law that you keep out of the Ten Commandments, which would just be six, for every one of the ten you think you keep, you're breaking over 600 of them. You hear me? Every, if you keep six that you think, for each one you're keeping, you're breaking a hundred. You understand that? That's not a very good ratio, friend. That's not a very good denomination there. Uh, to break six, or keep six, and to break 600? Listen, I'm not too good at arithmetic, but I know that that's going to put you in the place of eternal damnation. Amen. Even I can figure that out. That even in works and deeds of religion, a lot of people 
glory in good works. Oh, they want to do this and do that and do this and do that. And most of the time, it's contained in the realm of their family. That's who they'll give their extra money to. That's who they'll buy extra presents for, extra gifts for. That's who they'll take out to eat and all these things. They never think about contributing anything to the total stranger that's homeless, the total stranger that's poor, the total stranger that's sick and afflicted and tormented by the things of this life. It ain't nothing but the devil. But they're oppressed so much, and they ain't got nobody that knows God to try to come to their rescue. And the people that God runs by them, that's just it. They run them by them. They're not stopping and paying attention to the needs of the people that they see with their natural eyes in this lifetime. God puts some of them out there just to try you and your what you call faith and your good works. Did you know that? God tests and uh, tries people's what they call salvation to see if it is full of good works and good deeds. Most people, even heathen, have the good works that most of you as Christians profess. Do you know that? Don't the world love its own? Don't drunks love drunks? Don't liars and thieves keep company one another? Don't people that are complete heathen keep company with their own heathen friends and family? Can you see where this world is at? Can't you see what the Lord is talking about? When we become a Christian, then, and it talks about this in the book of James. I don't preach out of the book of James very much because uh, James is preaching to the Jews. To twelve tribes scattered abroad. The reason those twelve tribes were scattered from Jerusalem uh, at that time was because of the persecution that the Apostle Paul was giving the church at Jerusalem. And he had Stephen uh, killed and stoned to death and he had James beheaded and all of the natural Jews at that time were beginning to leave Jerusalem and get scattered abroad. Well, James, in his little book, he's trying to bring forth an effort to uh, keep them together and tell them to keep the faith and be uh, uh, keep holding on to the faith that they have. But James talks about works. The works that the, even the law demanded. Not the total works of the laws of holy days, feast days, Sabbaths, and paying tithes, and uh, all of these things. But listen, just good works. He said, how could you see a man hungry and walk by him and just say, Lord, please feed him, when you could have fed him? You see what James is displaying here? Uh, if somebody walked up to you and said, look, i got to have $30 to finish paying my light bill or they're going to cut my lights off. And you walked off and said, well, I'm going to help you pray that God will give you that money. Friend, listen to me. You realize what kind of image you're showing God of your word professing Christian? Can you see that? Can you understand that there's more to being a Christian than just professing with our lips? Our faith goes out into a many of ways. And we, Paul, uh, uh, let me just bring this. James also said this, and I really like this. He said, if a man comes into your assembly, that means your church, and said he has on a big uh, coat and fine pants and uh, James calls it gay clothing. Very colorful and has on golden rings and he has on the best in their time. And he said, you see this man go over and take him and said, here, come over here and sit down in this high seat. Probably up in the pulpit. Probably in the side of the chairs where the elders normally sit in your church. But you see, he said, but then they come one in that is not dressed so good. 
and that he doesn't have very good appearance and that he's probably unshaven and he's probably dirty and got a little dirt in it around his beard and in his hands and stuff. He didn't have a good clean wash basin with soap to wash in. He didn't have a clean towel. But yet he come to the assembly, to the church, to worship God. And then that same man goes and gets him and takes him way over on the side of the church and sets him down about the middle or the back of the congregation. You see that difference in the respect of persons? How the one same man made. And that's the way you are. You are respect of persons. If people have money, they're in three-piece suits and $500 shoes or $1,000 shoes. And if they drove in there in a $50,000 automobile and got out and walked in there and packing with him and his wife and two or three kids, they've got on four or $5,000 worth of clothes. You see? Oh, man. Most of the people in the congregation would be whispering, Man, do you see what they got on? Man, do you see how they're dressed? Man, do you see their car? You see what you're doing? You're making respect to persons also. If that person, oh, you would just love to invite them to your house to eat or them invite you to their house to eat. But see, a person that had that those little d dust on his clothes or had a little dirt on his face or his hands, fingernails were not quite clean or something, there is no way you want that person in your home. There's no way you're going to his home. You see how respect of persons, our world's full of discrimination, but yet our world is full of billions of people that call themselves Christians. Jesus got one word for it, hypocrite. Hypocrite. You say you're a Christian, but you're not bringing forth the works of a Christian. Oh, it's easy to give your 20-year-old son a $50 bill to go out and spend and blow it on something. But no, it's not so easy if you take that $50 bill and walk over here to this person that's dirty and that needs a bath and that needs a new pair of shoes. Uh, it's not so easy to go up to a complete stranger and give him that $50 bill. Because in our mind, in our mind, you see, we have become like a judge, is what the scripture says. We've become a judge in the two people. We've become a judge in the man and the woman, uh, or in the man uh, and the, the rich one and the poor one. We've become a judge, and that's what we're doing when we see uh, men and women for whom they are. You see, so many, much of this Christian walk is so full of the things that are not in the realm of a Christian's life. We have got to get back to this book where love needs and things that we see people need that we don't just go over here and pray, God help them people that we walk over as an ambassador for Christ and say, can I help you? You see what I'm saying? Boy, our love today, it's so censored. It's, our, our love is censored toward our denominations. Our love is censored toward our loved ones in them denominations. But get out of that. We ain't got no love. We're not even looking for anything that's going to require us to do some kind or type of commitment. We ain't got time to hear it because we know uh, it's going to cost us money if we stay here. If we walk over and have a presence or introduction to them people, it's going to cost me money. So I just avoid it. I just walk the other way. M many of you are doing that, friend, if you would just listen to your conscience inside. It's trying to show you. You can't be a respecter of persons. I know people, uh, you have got hatred pure 100% hatred in your heart for people 
in our days, in our time right here, in our generation. You've got hatred for them. You don't want them. You can't stand the ground they walk on. But yet you say you're a Christian. Friend, is that what Jesus did? Show me one that he turned away. Show me one that he didn't have time to stop and hear what they needed. Show me one, one incident where he walked away and said, well, I'm sorry, go on. I'm going to pray for you. No. When we learn the two great commandments, to love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our uh, spirit and our mind, when we learn that, and then we practice that, then we have to learn the second one, which is to love thy neighbor as thyself. Our neighbors, just about anybody on this earth. You understand that? Whomever crosses your path, whomever comes into the realm of your life, and you can't discriminate. You can't say, well, I just helped a guy last year. That guy cost me a thousand dollars and do this and that and that. And if you're going to give like that, you're giving grudgingly and God ain't even going to give you no reward for that. If you give grudgingly, don't expect God's blessing to be on you. You have to give from the heart right here the abundance of love cheerfully. You have to do it in such a way that it just overwhelms you to do that good. But see, we're just not seeing God for whom God is because our mind is blinded with all the cares of this world. We're so caught up and so full of lust, so full of covetous, so full of greed, so full of that filthy, looser stuff. That's the only reason most of you give, because you think you're going to get back a hundredfold, and the devil might see that you get it. Because the devil, he's the god of this world, and money is what makes this world work. It's the economy uh, of money that makes this whole world work. As far as friends or caring or sharing, trying to do something good out of godliness, it just about don't exist. We can't do them. We want to charge them for them. We want them to be indebted to us. We want them to do something back for us. Friend, let's find out who God really is. Get you a King James Version of the Bible. Find out what these scriptures mean. Learn them two commandments that Jesus quotes. To love him first and then to love your neighbor. That's whom you can see, really. Now, we have a lot of people in this world that we can't walk hand in hand with. No, I can't go out here and find myself in the place of do drug addicts and dope addicts and alcoholics and murders and all this kind just to hang around with them and just to keep them company and me be in their presence and them in mine. No, I can't do that. I'm told to shun that kind of stuff. But every once in a while, I'm going to get tried by the Lord and these people are going to cross my path and they're going to find out just how deep my love is. And see, it's the same to you. It's not just me because I'm a preacher and that God's going to try. He's going to try his own, all of his, all of them that are in his church, all of them that are in his body. We all will be tried. And the thing of this is, is that we do the will of God in us. We are his ambassador. We are to fulfill what God intends and purpose for us to do to that person whom he puts there to our paths to intersect. It ain't just a coincidence, friend. You better start taking them a little bit more serious. Well, I hope that this radio broadcast, I hope you get to see this on YouTube and on the Facebook. I hope that you can learn something from this that will change and affect your life uh, in a way that's positive toward godliness. 
I guarantee you all of your good works and good intentions will never go unmerited or they will never uh, go unrecognized before God because He loves them that loves him, uh, them. He loves them that loves Him. Just think about that. Well, uh, my address over at Hardsburg, Kentucky is a P.O. Box 743, Hardensburg, Kentucky, 40143. My phone number over there is 270-756-6784. If you would like a CD of today's broadcast, all you have to do is remember the date, call me, write me a letter, tell me you'd like a, one copy or two copies or ten copies, whatever. But uh, if you know the date, I can give you this C CD. It's free of charge. I will mail it to you or I'll drop it off if you're nearby. And anyway, it will not cost you one penny. It's free of charge. And uh, just remember that this radio broadcast that you're going to hear today on uh, January the 1st of 17 is also available on the YouTube all you have to do is type in my name, Bobby P. Carmen, uh, and you'll come to all the videos that we have up to date. And uh, if you want to see it on the Facebook, the same videos are posted there. Ta type in uh, the name Paula McKenzie, and uh, her Facebook and my YouTube have all got the same messages, but... Uh, just one or the other, whichever is convenient for you. And I hope that these things will increase your knowledge of God. Write these scriptures down and look them up for yourself and see if I am not telling you the truth. Uh, also, uh, if you would like to be a part of this or in a Bible study, just call me. If you'd like to have a home Bible study, I'll come to your house or your church. And my blessings to you is God bless you till next week.